<laughs> Tricked you, buddy. All right. So, guys, what I did there, the reason why I was laughing about that is when you're using one of these uh, glide baits, swim baits, anything that kind of has a slow, methodical motion like that, um, a little thing I do sometimes, if you see a fish trailing it and they're following it all the way back, but they're not committing to it, um, what I like to do is I give it a little bit of a pump. I'll show you guys right here what I mean, but that's the pike right there. That thing is beat up too. Look at that thing, really strung out. But what I do is, you know, you see that fish and he's hot on the tail of that bait, but he's not quite committing to it. You give that reel just a boom, boom, and then stop. And that bait will dart, it'll be erratic. And that'll cause that fish to think, one, that he's he's been found, and it triggers something in their brain and they go from curiosity to kill mode really, really fast. Wow. <laughs> That's so there you go, guys. 17-inch largemouth. Came out of the water. Really, really aggressive fish. But overall, guys, the reason why I'm measuring the fish here is that there's a tournament. It's a regional tournament that Strike King's putting on where you could win $3,000 for first place. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I don't think I'm necessarily going to win $3,000. But if I can place in 10th, even winning a little bit of money and some gift cards will be fun. Especially for the $10 entry that I had to pay. What we're doing is junk fishing. We're actually testing baits that I haven't had a lot of success with. And that's something I like to do once in a while is I go out and I take baits that I, I don't know if they work or not. And I test them on a lake that I have a little bit more knowledge of, like this particular body of water, to see if they're viable or maybe I should just start leaving them at home. And I do that every year. And I try to pare down my arsenal little by little each time I fish and what that does is it allows me to really only carry baits that I have confidence in and baits that work. And it's something I highly recommend doing is don't necessarily just put everything in a box and never look at it again. The beginning of the year is a perfect opportunity to take baits out, try them out, and just kind of filter little baits in, filter some out, and once you get down to that set that you know works, keep that in your kayak or your boat as your main arsenal, and then, you know, piece and mismatch some other stuff later on once you know what the conditions are calling for. Two of the day on the wacky rig this time. Little reaction tackle with this wacky hook for the win. These hooks, guys, I'm telling you, they hold really, really well. That fish was not going anywhere. Look at that hook, guys. Buried right through his lip. Oh, I can't even get that thing out of there. There you go, guys. There is another nice little bass. Not too bad. I'm actually gonna put him on the board too, just so I can get some numbers of that. Um, so what I did there is I kind of just wandered around until I found a location that had some submergent grass, some actual pads above the water, and I'm just kind of target casting to those areas, trying to find the best little spots that these fish are holding up on. Um, I was fishing yesterday and all the fish I caught were roughly about the same size as this guy. And I think what they are is, I think they're fry garters. I think they are in here to help protect the spawning fish. So I'm thinking that we might be able to get into a bunch of these very, very soon because 
these fish are really aggressive right now. They're fighting hard and they're hitting hard, which tells me that they're not just hitting, but they're feeding up for the spawn. And I'm really hoping that that means I'll be able to find some of his bigger cousins that are really interested in uh, eating my bait. Wow, and a jumbo perch. Oh, I hope I get him in. Look at that freaking perch, dude. <laughs> Everything's biting today, guys. Where'd you guys see this thing? Oh, man. Uh, I'm my real really mad, but I'll deal with that in a minute. Look at this freaking perch. Holy crap. As my boy bear fishing would say, it's a jumbo. <laughs> Look at this freaking perch, man. Wow. Look at the size of that freaking perch, guys. Look at that fish. That is insane. So 19 and a quarter inch. So I'm gonna say probably almost a four and a half pound bass right there, guys. Nice fish caught again on the wacky rig. And we're gonna keep working our way around, kind of dinking and dunking because it seems to be working. It's kind of a weird day to, for finesse to be working, honestly, because it is so like nasty. It's cold, it's windy. I was actually considering going home but when you catch a fish of that caliber, I can't give up just yet. Oh. I think that's another freaking. That might be a large mouth. Dude, I've caught so many, so many rock bass today. This is ridiculous. This is so stupid. It's another one, guys. That's definitely a large mouth. Buddy, come here. Come here, you're mine. Heck yeah, guys. I think I'm pretty much just uh, junk fishing all day now. It's been a fun day, guys. That was the six cents trace after catching a rock bass. Almost put it down, but I decided I've been having success with it this year So we're gonna try it and uh, glad I didn't put it away because This is a good size bass And I'm very very happy That I did not put it down. All right guys, so I caught that fish on a bait I've been playing around with it is a six cents trace if you guys can see it right there um, I did a video recently on this bait talking about how it's effective, but I want to kind of go a little bit more in detail on how I'm working this bait. So what I found with this bait, this is the slow sink version. Um, what I found with this bait is that it's most effective when you're in calm water. So when you get those days, even though it's raining a little bit, there's not much wind, not much chop on the water, and the clarity of the water cleaned up quite a bit. I can see now I have about three to four foot of visibility 
And what I learned about this bait is, is because it sits about this far below the surface, it does not dive very deep at all, no matter how long you wait. And as soon as you retrieve it, it starts to come up. But what it does is it mimics really, really well a bluegill just kind of cruising. So if you fish in about three to five feet of water is about the prime depth that I found. And you cast this thing out, and I'll show you guys right now what I do with it is I literally cast it out and I slow roll it. So I purposely reel it very slowly, almost to the point where it's actually not fully swimming. It almost like washes out or stalls out because I'm working it so slowly. And what it does is it just kind of meanders almost like a slow worked glide bait is kind of almost the consistency it has in the water with those joints. It just kind of cruises slowly. And what I found is when I do that, the fish just come unglued on it. I think it's just because it looks like a very lazy, lethargic bluegill and those bass just cannot help themselves but to smash it. So it's been a really, really effective bait so far. Now I will say these are not a cheap bait. This is a $25 swim bait. Um, to be honest, in the scope of swim baits, it's actually not that expensive. But in the sense of, you know, talking, fishing a wacky rig versus a swim bait, it's a pretty, pretty good investment. But I will tell you that this particular bait has been very effective. I've caught a lot of fish this year on it in this type of condition. Like I said, it's calm. There's not a lot of chop on the water. The wind kind of died down and I just go through the shallows and I work it very slowly and those fish just come on glued and T-bone this thing. So that's what we're gonna do for a little bit longer here. I'm probably gonna head home soon just because I'm starting to get wet, I'm starting to get cold. I've caught some fish, I've had my fun, but we're gonna keep going for a little bit longer, see if we can find ourselves one more big. <laughs> that was just sitting there, dude. That bait wasn't even in the water, bro. That's funny. Oh man, you got fucked up bad by that parasite, huh? Damn, dude. Hey, hey, bro. 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 Listen, man, I'm gonna let you go, I promise. All right, guys, that was another fish on a different bait. So that was a Strike King 2.5 square bill. Um, I'll admit, I changed to that one because I didn't want to risk losing the one that I've been catching on. That is a bait that I want to use in an upcoming tournament. That one I was catching on earlier was a 13 Scamp in Fire Tiger. It's the larger size, um, and that bait has been a sneaky little bait that I've used a lot when I really just need a bite. And I don't want to lose it, and this body of water has pike. So I cut it off, threw this on, honestly, just to see. It's a bait I've never caught a fish on, but it's a color that's really popular. So I said, you know what, why not? Well, so far, I've caught and fish on it in a couple of casts. I had a bluegill follow it back to the boat. I actually don't think that there's a pattern. Um, I think that the weather conditions combined with the fact that we're about to hit spawn. We're talking 62 degree water. I think those fish are right in that feed up stage where they're just eating and killing anything that gets put in their face. And I think that's really the pattern today is if you put a bait in the right spot, those fish are just gonna pulverize it. So I really don't think that color or bait presentation really matters today. And you'll have that during the spawn. If you ever wonder why YouTube guys or anybody that you see on the internet talking about the spawn and, and why is it so important, it's because to be honest, it's one of the best times of year because those fish gorge themselves on food right before they go into spawn because they don't eat while they're going through the spawn process. So you get the biggest fish that you're ever gonna have because they have loaded themselves up to the maximum with food and you get a lot of fish all kind of coming into a single area. When they're coming in the spawn, they all hit the same basic areas. They're all coming to one place and they're a lot easier to find. So this time of year is a lot of fun and based on what I'm seeing, 
This being a smaller body of water, so it's gonna hit spawn a little bit earlier because everything about the spawn is based on water temp. I think we're gonna find that next weekend, we're gonna have a lot of fish moving up, getting ready to make babies, and we're gonna have a fun day on the water. I'm gonna end the video right here, guys. I really appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video. I do wanna mention um, a lot of the fish that I caught today were on reaction tackle wacky rig hooks. Um, and also reaction tackle braid. So if you guys are interested in picking up any of that stuff, I have links down in the show notes. So check that out. It helps the channel out, gives you guys a 15% discount. So everybody wins. I wanna thank you guys again for watching this video and taking time to check out my channel. If you haven't already, hit that like, hit that subscribe. And as always, let's get out there, catch more fish. Stop recording.